in your classic noir films and novels, solving a case never amounts to a happy ending. The detective is always left with a sense of bitterness, a feeling that, before he took the case, the world was a better place, that he was a better person. Come on, now speed it out! Sometimes I just let my character get the best of me. What do you want from me? I told Stone what I knew, that he was going to let Yale win, that if he didn't, O'Leary would destroy Helen Moore's career, and that Moore was doomed either way, or would be as soon as America discovered her sweetheart was on drugs. I don't believe you. No way. Who sent you? Today? Nobody. And what if I did believe you? What would that change? If I don't do this for her, how could I ever look her in the eyes? How could we stay together? You think you'll stay together when you lose your title and they accuse her of doping? At least I know I tried. I came to convince you otherwise, but I think you might be right. You better take a dive. <laughs> I didn't take you for a romantic, Black Sad. I feel you. But trust me, your manager is a murderer. Get as far away from him as possible. Hey, Black Sad! Thank you. Yale confirmed to me that Dunn found out that Mitchell was giving him meds. That was the reason they argued the evening of his death. In fact, I was clean at the time. Hadn't used for days. I didn't want to go down that road. I wanted to follow Joe. But he discovered everything. He didn't believe me when I said I had nothing to do with it. But you used again. Only after his death. I, I needed to cope. But the drugs gave you a panic attack. <laughs> yeah. But I've been clean ever since. Mitchell gave you the pills when he stopped by the hospital. Hence, your miraculous recovery. Are you planning on taking them before the fight? Don't do it, Bobby. Someone has to save the gym. I owe it to Joe, and Sonia, and my Aunt Mary. The only thing you owe them is integrity. What would Dunn think of you now? Stone and Yale hadn't taken away the bitterness I felt. 
I needed a friend. He was outraged that I hadn't given him the tip, but he let it go as soon as I bought him a milkshake. After the perfect storm of corruption and murder, only friendship could reconcile me with the world. Only that could make me believe in mankind again. Only that could cleanse my soul. Only that and money. In your standard noir novel, Yale and Stone would be punished for breaking the rule. There would be justice for Sonia, the victim. But this was the real world. As the detective who had cracked the case, I just had to get my paycheck and be on my way. Nice to meet you, Mr. Blacksad. Mr. Thorpe is on his way. Care to take a seat while you wait? I guess I'll just have to wait. He'll be here in a minute. Please, take a seat. No matter how many curveballs Destiny throws his way, he always manages to land on his feet. When he was a rising sports talent, the war put an end to his career, so he became a war hero. After the war, he didn't end up like Gil or like me. He became an elite athlete, a Hall of Fame football star. When an accident left him in a wheelchair, he went on to succeed in advertising. That's not possible. But what if Tim Thorpe was somehow involved in Mitchell's operation? Mr. Blacksad? Mr. Thorpe is running later than expected, but he insists on meeting you, if you don't mind. Sure. As long as you help me fight off this boredom. That's not in my job description, but... If I had her markings on my skin, would I be the same person? Would my name be different? is right, there should be a meeting with Mitchell noted somewhere in Thorpe's agenda.
Well, you see, I've got a problem. In order to figure out how much Mr. Thorpe owes me, I need to know what day I started working on the case. But I can't remember. You wouldn't have that written down, would you? It sure wasn't on my shift. I'd remember. Let me see. was here two days before he died? Why didn't Thorpe ever mention that? I'm sorry, but your name's not on here. Wait, I just remembered something. The day I came, Joe Dunn had just walked out the door. Well, no. You don't have any appointments. Although, I guess I could have forgotten to write you in. Mr. Dunn, who's usually very kind, left in a flurry. He even slammed Mr. Thorpe's door. Okay. Now I know I have to get into Thorpe's office. And he didn't even say goodbye. Yes. That was the day. You don't recall me because the minute I saw Dunn stomp out, I followed him. I never actually came in. Of course. That explains it. No doubt. Hmm. So, since it looks like Mr. Thorpe won't be here soon... I think I'll go take a walk down the hall. Gotta stay in shape. Come on, Thorpe. Tell me there's a back door to your office. Should I play the Smirnoff trump card again? Smirnoff didn't know what to think. He asked me to watch out and call him as soon as I had more information. He also told me that Gil had finally talked. He denied having blocked the basement door and said the truck door opened, but he got knocked on the head as soon as he tried to get out. He then woke up when the police found him beside the basement door. Obviously, the same person who had jammed the door had carried him there. Cats aren't afraid of heights. That's why I've never felt vertigo. A 
In my experience, when something looks really good, it ends up smelling really bad. It's a bit strange to see no office chair behind a desk until you remember the desk's owner is in a wheelchair. Why am I surprised? In every investigation, there comes a point where every single lead seems to go down the drain. And you have to retrace your steps to get back on the right track. I better not use it. It might be connected to the switchboard at the front desk. And one of the strengths, the accuracy of his throw. I earned the nickname Iron Arm. I used to throw the ball in 50 ml. Huh? And yeah. Uh, went whatever it wanted. And my coach, the great Joffrey Sox. Uh -huh. And so I worked hard. Uh, Pearl Harbor. I enlisted immediately. Uh -huh. Uh, after losing a partner in combat, uh, a serious injury, I asked to be relocated. I became a sniper. I know I shouldn't say this, but I was one of the best in the army. And it was all thanks to my accuracy. No, it was all thanks to Jeffrey Sachs. I wonder how many Americans that man saved with my arm. After these words, Tim Thorpe is moved almost to tears and asks me to take a break. It's shocking to see how an athlete and soldier, a man whose aim and skill won him a medal of honor and the nickname Surgeon among his brothers in arms. That can't be. I mean, it could be a coincidence, but no. Of course, it wasn't Mitchell or Gil. It was Thorpe who shot Randall at the hospital. Ha! What if I place Thorpe's gun up there and corner him so that he has to stand up to get it? The show was about to begin. All I needed was an audience and some patience. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> 
Arr! Don't you know who you're dealing with, matey? What a silly man. Mutiny! You want to be shark bait, do you? Oh, Alexa. I feel terrible for keeping you waiting. John. Uh, but you see, there was mutiny on board, so... Uh... Stop! See what I have to put up with. All right, gentlemen, to the cabin with you. Onward. Uh, yeah, I can't. Come along, Blackside. <laughs> Julie, don't let anyone bother us. <laughs> Honey, will you wait in the boardroom for me, please? But I'll just be a minute then. I think you've already suffered enough. Okay. And think about where you'd like to have dinner tonight, okay? You see, I'm not gonna pay you for solving the case. Wow. I thought you were the kind of man who was true to his word. <laughs> no, it's not that. You'll get every penny we agreed on, and more. But not because you solved the case, but for her. Two days ago, she wanted to end it all. Drop out of college, sell the gym. Too many wounds to heal. But through your incredible work, you managed to heal them. Well, perhaps not completely. It takes time to get over something like this. But at least, thanks to you, Sonia wants to be happy. She has hope. I'm going to help her make Dunn's gym the best in the city. Who would have ever guessed it, huh? I'm happy for her. She's been through a lot, and honestly, I wasn't sure she'd make it. Well, she hasn't just yet. But she will in time. Anyway, Back to the case, all those people you confronted. Gil, the German doctor, even Mitchell. Huh. <laughs> I would have never suspected him. Did they say anything? Why did they do it? Did they mention any accomplices? They did mention a certain surgeon. Surgeon? You have uh, any idea who that could be? A journalist told me. Ring a bell? I... I'm sure you've got good intentions, but you're wrong. What makes you think that? I... I'm sure there's an explanation. Don't deny it. I know Mitchell gave them to you. <laughs> People see a wheelchair and think, poor guy, he can't walk. But there's so much more to it than that. Some nights I can't even sleep from the pain. That doesn't explain why you didn't tell me you knew about those drugs. I know you ordered Randall Lee to kill Joe Dunn. And you tried to frame Bobby Yale, who had recently given up your medical services. Joe was my friend, don't you get it? I hired you to solve this damn case. You think that's what a murderer would do? Only because you thought I'd blame Bobby Yale and drop the case. But as soon as I realized something wasn't right, you sent Randall Lee and Gil to give me a scare. And when all that failed, you ordered Lee to kill me. You're the type that won't open his jaws once he's got his prey, aren't you? I think I've made that clear enough by now.
Put yourself in my place for a minute. You're a promising football player who just got back from the war, but you're still a nobody. The man you saved kindly opens his house to you. And that man is still undone by his wife's passing. He works all day at his gym, and he drinks himself to sleep at night. So you practically end up raising his daughter. You give her her very first abacus. You encourage her to further her education. You comfort her when she misses her mother and her father. <sighs> Meanwhile, your sporting career takes off. Life is good. Until one day, out of the blue, an accident cripples you. An old friend, Mitchell, tells you he knows someone who can help you. A German doctor. His drugs take some time to work, but uh, they do wonders. You manage to walk for short bursts at a time, little by little. And those bursts keep getting longer. But the drugs aren't cheap at all. So you have to find a way to pay for them, don't you see? So you started by selling drugs to athletes. Then you decided to start an advertising agency to hire those same athletes. Drugs would help them excel, and you'd get better ad deals. The perfect business model. Your first client? Craig Spano. His career had hit a rough patch, so... He was the guinea pig for your new operation, and yet... When the drug started having serious side effects, you got rid of him. Afraid he would talk, you tried to kill him. That's why he hid. From then on, your business was smooth sailing. You even began to think you were above the law. You thought that you were untouchable. Until Joe Dunn found out, and then, two days before his unfortunate death, he came to see you. That's enough now! You stop it! Now, I don't know if I'm above the law, but I am sure as hell not beneath it. Do you know how much power I have? The kind of people I eat with every day? I could shoot you right now, and nothing would happen to me. With that gun you keep in your drawer? I'm afraid not. I placed your pistol out of reach, just in case you happen to confirm my suspicions, Iron Arm. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have an appointment with the police. I won't let anyone wreck my life again. Sonya and I, we deserve a future. You can come in now, Smirnoff. Timothy Wilson Thorpe, drop your weapon. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the state will provide one for you. <coughs> Mr. Thorpe. <coughs>
Sonia Dunn, you are under arrest for the death of Timothy Wilson Thorpe. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Just shut up. Sonia should never set foot in jail. Black said, don't. Finding Thorpe guilty would have taken time. Sooner or later, the state of New York would have executed him. Sonia saved us all time. And money. No, there's no way this could work. How do we hide this? John? I'll put the bullets back in the gun. Thorpe had me at gunpoint, but Sonia was faster. We're doing the right thing, Chief. John, why do I end up getting my hands dirty every time I'm close to you? After everything that had happened, the last thing I was interested in was the fight. Did Yale take drugs before the fight? Did Stone let him win? I had done everything in my power for things to go the way my moral compass dictated. Whether anyone would listen to me, that was another story. Because no matter what they tell us, our actions don't always determine our future. <laughs> My moral compass. As if I even knew what that means. I didn't even know what to think of my performance throughout the case. Did I have a clear conscience? <laughs> Would I have made the same decisions, given the chance? <laughs> 